quiet here. There is only the scurrying of a pencil on a pad of paper. It is the same quiet that has always marked the relentless and dogged quest of science into the ailments of man. It is here that quest begins. Libraries mark the first step of the painstaking trek on the trails of research. Research that may, someday, save a human life. Perhaps even your life. It takes time to learn what other men have learned. And more time to push forward, armed with a test tube, into the unknown. No hourly miracles are performed by the research worker. It may be many months, many years, before the frontier of medical and pharmacological knowledge inches forward. Years of work, the accumulated effort of many men may finally produce, for the man who holds the key, a pharmaceutical that drives the battle line a little deeper into illness's vast domain. Care and accuracy, the precise procedure of the laboratory, are second nature to the research worker. Often only tiny amounts of materials result from new research procedures, amounts that it would be impossible to analyze accurately or at all without microanalysis. But microanalysis permits an accurate assay to be made. With microcombustion apparatus, for example, a portion as minute as one or two tenths of a milligram can be assayed for its carbon and hydrogen content. With microbalances, less material is needed to make as accurate an assay as larger amounts afford. So delicate is this balance that one degree change in temperature will change the weight. It is with this care that the research worker labors for mankind. For without that care, without the constant striving for accurate results, those many months or many years of toil might be wasted. It is a continuous, constant care that the research worker employs, for his is a task that is never completed. In the laboratories of pharmaceutical manufacturers, these workers for mankind conduct research in pure science as well as on products. Under a director of research, they work in several different divisions. There are those in chemistry and pharmacy, they conduct research in bacteriology. They are busily engaged in the important field of pharmacology and endocrinology. They seek new knowledge of vitamins in the expanding field of food and nutrition. A century ago, only some inorganic salts and crude vegetable extracts were available for medical use. Research in organic chemistry purified the extracts and gave to therapeutics chemical substances of known strength and composition. Many men in many laboratories continue that century-old work in fundamental research, for the problems of research are perennial. The same laboratories, the same men who developed the effective germicide mercrescent are still not content. Their research goes on much as if that germicide were unknown. Just as in the many other fields of research in which chemistry and pharmacy is engaged, work with germicides is continuous, dynamic. It is not a static thing. It took many years to develop mercrescent but hundreds of possible new germicides continue to flow from the research laboratories. In the development of new germicides, the chemist faces more than the comparatively simple combination of familiar substances. New materials must be sought, or changes and new developments made in those which may already have been used in germicides. In one of the busy laboratories where other nearby workers are engaged in studying viruses and blood substitutes, the research chemist's experimental germicides must meet the standard Food and Drug Administration test for effectiveness as imposed by research bacteriologists. Bacteria are introduced into a test tube of diluted germicide. The procedure appears routine. There is 
nothing spectacular about a row of test tubes in a constant temperature tank. But perhaps someday, if it passes the tests met here, there may be found a new and better germicide. The research bacteriologist and this test are the judge and jury of the work of many other research workers that may have taken many months. It may be more dramatic to work with deadly viruses, but this test of experimental germicides completes for each sample a phase of research. Here is the answer. Here, this small part of the extensive work of research reaches a decision. This experimental germicide has killed bacteria, but not enough bacteria. Like so many others, it's not good enough. Even if the research worker discovers a new germicide, the final answer is not yet reached. More research workers must study the germicide under production conditions in pilot laboratories. The perfection of a product in the research laboratory and its quantity production are two different things. Miniature plants, pilot apparatus, are used to gain manufacturing experience. Special production conditions may require careful development and study. It may be years before a pharmaceutical is ready for regular production. Workers in pharmacology and endocrinology grapple with the unknown in an ever-broadening field. The study of hormones, those chemical messengers of the human body. Here, the pioneers of research continue to press forward along the trail first opened half a century ago when the study of hormones was begun. The research worker has, of necessity, invented specialized techniques in order to track down the often elusive things that he seeks. Tedious manipulation of crystalline fractions demonstrates again the painstaking toil of research at its never-ending job. But not only hormones are studied here. The effects of pharmaceuticals must be pondered. This microtome is used to prepare microscopic sections of tissue so that the research worker may study the effects of drugs. These carefully prepared microscopic sections may bear a telltale clue to a new path of research. As important as the development of new medicines, is the work of the laboratories where research in the newer field of nutritional science is conducted. Many experts in food and nutrition are continually studying methods for a better, more accurate determination of vitamins. The fluoroscopic assay of some components of the B-complex vitamins is one of those methods. The effects of these accessory food factors and their values must be determined. In cage after cage, in this room and many others, are the homes of rats that assist in this phase of research. Thousands of rats each year are fed specialized diets, diets that will tell the research worker something about what men, like you and me, need, what nutritional deficiency causes some of the ills our flesh is heir to, what can be done to combat that ailment of man. The research workers in food and nutrition make no soothsayers' claims. What they want to know is the difference between the wasted skinny rat and the healthy strong one. How many units of what vitamin must be fed to the skinny rat to make him healthy? Why, they ask, does the deficiency of a vitamin make one rat lazy, the sufficiency make another frisky? Why does a man feel tired and drawn? Maybe a rat will give the answer. After 20,000 rats have been tested, there may be a hint to the answer. Maybe after many thousands more have been tested, the answer will be found. Like the other tasks of research, this is a long, slow one. And from all these fields of research, the discoveries trickle to a final judgment. 
they move toward a final decision through the medical department. The medical department, when a new pharmaceutical is discovered, must select clinicians with the proper facilities so that the new finding may be completely tested before it is released for use. Grants and fellowships are given to the medical schools of outstanding universities to carry out this last step of research. The medical department sponsors and designs these clinical studies. What happens after a pharmaceutical is developed and proved? Here, perhaps, is a symbol of what happens. For here is the epitome of the care and of the control that goes into every pharmaceutical bearing a trustworthy name. This is a sterility test in the bacteriological department where products demanding aseptic conditions in their manufacture are prepared. And this is one of the men who check the sterility of everything produced in the bacteriological department. Constant watch must be kept over the products of this department. There must be a constant and exacting examination of each product. For each product must be more than pure. It must be sterile when it reaches the hands of the physician, when it is administered to a patient. Care is a watchword from the time a material, like a solution of the sex hormone, begins its trip toward a finished pharmaceutical. The previously tested solution is filtered through Birkfeld or Pasteur Chamberlain filters. All of the apparatus used in the filtration of this hormone has been sterilized. With this care, the preparation of gonadogen begins. This is a product that challenges a bacteriologist, for it cannot be sterilized with heat nor with chemicals. If either is used, the hormone will be damaged and rendered ineffective. Samples already have been tested and assayed in the first of a long series of tests and assays that will continue throughout the processing of this product. After it has been dried to powder form, additional samples will be assayed and tested for sterility. The powdered sex hormone is passed twice through sterile Monel metal screens. Then, if it passes its tests, it is ready to be made into hypodermic tablets. In an aseptic room, fed with filtered air and under aseptic conditions, the powder is molded by hand into tablets. It takes skill to press just the right amount of gonadogen into each tablet. The forming plate is sterile. Everything in this room is as clean and sterile as that in the hospital operating room. The girls who mold these tablets must take the same preparatory precautions that the surgeon takes before performing an operation. Gowns, gloves, mask, implements, all are sterilized. One tablet from each batch is tested. If it is not up to a rigorous standard, all of these tablets, all of those with the same control number, will be rejected, thrown away as waste. If they pass their tests, the tablets are placed in sterile vials in another aseptic room. Here the same care is taken that was exercised in their molding. Everything is done to keep the tablet sterile. Even the caps of the vials have been sterilized and have been designed to protect the sterility of the tablet and of the hypodermic solution it eventually will make. But the eyes that seek the invisible still have their say. Science is skeptical and must make sure that the final product is sterile. In testing the finished gonadogen tablets for sterility, the same technique and the same instruments the physician will use in administering the pharmaceutical are employed by those charged with the scientific policing of the product. Many hours of work, all of the previous care, will amount to nothing should this final test show that the tablets are not sterile. The workers for mankind are engaged not only in research. They spill over into actual production of the things their fellows find. They must be certain that the pharmaceutical the research worker has spent years to discover and develop will reach you as it should, pure, of the right amount, the right potency. Everywhere there are the guardians, unknown and unsung, of a nation's health. 
In the corner of a laboratory, there is harvested a growth of bacteria. It is Haemophilus pertussis, the dread germ of whooping cough. Nearly 5,000 children a year die of whooping cough. Rigid tests establish the bacteria before it is made into a vaccine. This vaccine is carefully tested and standardized at every step toward the final sterile preparation of the proved preventive of one of childhood's most deadly ailments. Each of these vials is filled with pertussis vaccine by the same kind of syringe that the physician uses to take the vaccine from its container. So the right dosage is ensured. We have hinted about this laboratory. It isn't a secret one. It is, perhaps, the most important so far as the production of the pharmaceutical products of this industry for health is concerned. The control laboratory is different from the research laboratories. Only products are handled here. One hesitates to intrude upon these men as they test the pharmaceuticals being manufactured. For these men of control are just as intent on their work as are those in research. These men who work here must work surely. It is their duty to halt or to approve the hundreds of pharmaceuticals moving through this very plant. The slightest amount of variance from strict formula discovered here can stop any pharmaceutical from further production at any stage it may be in. The men of control make many tests. They are always present. Unseen, they lean over the shoulder of every worker on every production line. The methods they use in testing pharmaceuticals are just as precise, just as accurate as those used by the research worker in developing the product. Each man in the control laboratory is responsible for the product that he approves. At every step of production, his is a responsibility. His job begins with great responsibility. Tons of raw materials, potential medicines, pour into this plant every day. And it is the duty of the men of control to test these supplies. Each with an identifying number attached, the raw materials come in. Samples of each lot are sent to the control laboratory. It is only after exhaustive analyses are made that the stamp of approval is ordered put on the tags by the chemists of the control department. Not until that stamp is affixed, not until control has released the raw drug or chemical, does it start through the constantly checked process of becoming a pharmaceutical. Perhaps, in its first step of manufacture, the drug may be sent to a mixer. The mixers handle half a ton or more of materials at a time. And even here there lurks the ever-present shadow of control. Tests must be made and approval granted before the carefully mixed formula can be fed into rotary tablet machines. A 
Under controlled conditions of temperature and humidity, these accurate, carefully regulated machines compress the powder into tablets, tablets of the right weight and consistency. They are counted automatically and go sliding into the right chute and, in the right number, tumble into bottles. As thousands of tablets an hour pour from the machines, Control periodically takes a bottle and carries it off to the laboratory for analysis. Control laboratory approval is still necessary before these tablets can be permitted to leave the plant. Here, products are tested in an artificial sunshine machine. Even the packages and bottles in which all of these hundreds of products are sent out for the physician and pharmacist must stand rigid tests in the packaging development department. Lights many times stronger than ordinary daylight beat upon the bottles to determine whether or not their contents will be affected by prolonged exposure to sunlight. This is only one test given all types of packages and wrappings. It is an indication of the thoroughness that the maker applies to his products. Throughout every step, in the production of every one of many, many pharmaceuticals, this testing goes on. For example, in the production of soft elastic capsules, not only the contents, but also the gelatin of the capsules is constantly tested. The gelatin must meet certain formula specifications. It must have a definite melting point. All of its physical properties are determined and checked in the control laboratory. It is only through these tests, through this control, that high standards are maintained. These men of control are hard to satisfy. When the capsules are finished, they must be placed in the centrifuge. They are tried here for leaks. Through the spinning action of the centrifuge, the leaking capsules are flattened out and separated from those that are correctly made. Only those capsules that are firm and without leaks move onward. But still, they are not ready to be packaged. The alert eyes of girls, long trained, look at the thousands of capsules, spot the ones in all of these that fail to meet standards. Imperfections eliminate some capsules and only those which pass inspection leave this table to be bottled. This care is exercised wherever a pharmaceutical is being made. It applies to products such as hard-filled capsules, which, like all other products, are made from materials approved by controlled laboratory tests. In air-conditioned rooms, the capsules are filled by specially designed machines. The ingredients for the capsules are weighed and mixed under the supervision of pharmacists and chemists. Samples of the filled capsules are sent to the control laboratory for assay. When they have been approved by control, the capsules will be polished and then inspect it again before being packaged. The same watchfulness is applied to the manufacture of granulated effervescent alkaline salts, a product that requires skilled techniques, specialized treatment, and special machines. Every batch bears the number that is controls certification of its purity and quality. Care is necessary in every step of the production of alkaline salts, tons of which pass through the granulators and dryers daily. But this is not the only place where tons of materials are handled. In the extraction of the B complex vitamins, large amounts of yeast and liver are processed in vacuum stills under the critical eyes of the control laboratory. And the same careful procedure is followed in the processing of huge quantities of the oil-soluble vitamins. In this plant, the vitamins of fish oils are extracted and refined, 
to be made into a finished vitamin product. Here are produced vitamin concentrates from cod liver oil. This health-building fluid must pass rigorous tests before it is permitted to go to the bottling machines. After being bottled, fluid pharmaceuticals are inspected with care to make certain that they are free of foreign materials. The control that watches over these bottles keeps as close a watch over everything that goes from this plant. It is only after all of the tests have been passed that a product reaches the packaging line. The label, bearing the Upjohn name, is not applied to a product until final approval has been given by the control laboratory. All of the tests, all of the care, all the continual watchfulness stand behind the products and their labels. They attest to the purity and quality of the product. It is important that they do, for this is the manufacturing arm of the twin professions, medicine and pharmacy. pharmaceuticals for mankind, these discoveries of the laboratories tested and proved, move out toward those who need them. Behind the careful, skilled production of pharmaceuticals, behind the constant, exacting assays of the control laboratory, working ceaselessly, little known, are the men whose quest is never ended. The men who push ever forward into the unknown. The men of research. Pharmaceutical manufacturing is a specialized industry it is an industry that stands with the physician at the bedside of a patient. It makes confident the hand of the pharmacist as he compounds a prescription for the ill. The pharmaceutical manufacturer meets the physicians, the pharmacists, and the patients need for dependable products.